Hi, I just got an offer to film a short film in the weekend and then I thought why not use this wonderful camera, the Fujifilm X-H2S and show how I set it up in a rig. There's a few different considerations you have to uh, con a few extra considerations you have to consider. Yeah, English is not my first language. You could probably tell. I'm doing it real time because I haven't been giving it any thought as of yet. So, except for finding a guy called Martin, thank you Martin, to uh, borrow this cage for the XH2S. I have to give it back. God damn it. Right, and I'll put on these super fancy one and a half dollar spectacles. Right, okay, I got the camera. I don't have a battery grip and I don't think I would get one because the battery, man, that, that holds up for a long time. It's really surprising. And it doesn't take a long time to, to switch it up. So that's the first. And then I have to place it in this small rig cage. Where they made a few extra points where the camera sort of sits. It will sit more stable. Yeah, I'm just like placing it here. I'm always looking for a coin. Buying one of these small screwdrivers, it just takes that pain away because I'll, I can never find a coin anywhere and it's a bit annoying to handle. But this one is really super solid. I like well thought out tools. It's just really cool. And then there's a couple of other screws you have to tighten as well. Right there, there's this little bracket. This one, like this, I have to tighten a little bit. It's pretty clever because this tool here, located down here under. So uh, it's always handy. If you got a strap, you have to take it out because else you can't get this one in. Or you could choose not to have this bracket in, but I will definitely suggest that you have it. I just tightened that. So it sits much more stable than it would have otherwise. And then there's one more right there. That little screw is also stabilizing the camera because it sits in a little hole that's in the camera body. This camera is now sitting really nicely within this cage. Nice thinking, small rig guys. I'll put the tool back in here. So that sits as well. All righty pants. Then we got so far. I already have a rig built for the Fujifilm X-T4. It looks like this. It's the whole bottom plate system. I have this little battery plate so I can feed this little motor with power. So I can use a remote like this, this one. But for this project, I think I'm going fully manual because Martin also lent me this one which is a fully manual mechanical focus thingy also from small rig I want to test that out and it doesn't require battery or anything so it always works so I want to take take away this little motor and uh, then maybe I can use the power for the display maybe or something. Let's see. I don't know if I said in the beginning. I haven't really planned this out. I'm just doing exactly what I usually do. With these cameras, we can go bloody well anywhere. So I basically just have to consider my lenses if I need something super wide. But for now, I'll just do the cage. And as you see here, I have this little, and I really hope it fits, or else I have to figure something else out. I have to loosen it a bit. Okay, seems as if it could fit. Let's try it. I would probably have to adjust it sideways at some point to see if the lens will align exactly in the middle. These two 
pins here or rods as you call them it's actually one rod i cut in half and it's made out of some composite material so it's super light for longer ones i have these ones and then i only use that if i have a really long zoom lens on like the mk 18 to 55 foodie film cinema lens but this project is um, i have to go super close a lot of times and i'm still addicted to this samyang 24 millimeters i haven't yet found a lens that i love using so much for video i'm crazy about the fujifilm lenses for photography but this one's cheap and i like the way it looks so i mean the look i get from it now i have the basic setup and now i sort of have to rig it up let me see maybe a handle it'd be nice to have a handle over here this little handle some of you might have seen the video i made where i actually make this little on off button it's very simple and it it just sits right there but i can see that um, martin haven't put on a little nato rail that i need over here so i have to find one and stick it onto that so this little nato rail will be enough to hold that handle let me just tighten these two screws so now i Tighten that one and then I can just there you go, like this. Yeah, it was just me fumbling. It's been a while since I've done this. The last couple of videos I made, uh, I did um, just with the camera without anything on it. But on the set, I need more stuff. Alrighty. And then I would like to use my trusted top handle. It makes it much easier to go low because I don't have to squat down and it's easier to keep it steady when you hold it like this than if you were holding it from the bottom and up. But it's missing something up here. I can't attach it because it's also based on a NATO rail. So I have to go into the drawer again and find one. Let me see if I have it. I hope I have. Nope. 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 Yes have one every time you buy something and you want to throw it away or get rid of it or it breaks collect everything screws and little thingies and whatnot and keep it in a drawer because you'll need it at some point so let me put in the nail rail on top of this like this and tightening a couple of screws uh, most if i hide my head i think it will focus don't do the head. Nope. There you go. And keep your tools where you keep these things. Because you don't want to spend time looking for that. Now I want to put this handle on. And if you've noticed that I, I'm putting it quite a bit forwards. And that's because the lens is pretty heavy. And I'm also going to use a matte box. There'll be quite a lot of weight in front. I have to turn off this face recognition thingy. All right, so I turned off the face recognition now, so probably won't have to fight this as much. I have my start and stop button that I made myself. I made a drawing and sent it to a shop, made them make four prototypes of it, and I really enjoyed using this. The only problem is that you have to have a special Y cable so you can trigger recording from both of these knobs. But it's only a question of soldering a cable. The next step is... I just noticed that this battery thingy have a second purpose. Which is that if it's not there, the whole thing tips over because of this handle right now. And now it doesn't. How smart is that? Note taken. Next up, I guess we are getting closer to my trusted semi yangi and put this on here. Maybe this is a good compromise. I can just like duck. So what next? I made a video a while ago. I was showing off my gear and then I broke my mat box. That was quite embarrassing and I haven't used it since but I uh, actually did fix it with some glue and I hope it holds up or else I am 
screwed. Don't focus on the Mercedes, focus on that, focus on that, you little, you little. Oh. Focus, focus on that. Focus, focus. The focus in these XHS, the, uh, the autofocus has become way better. It's really good now. Love and behold, I already made a Y cable for these two little triggers. But I don't know if there's a trigger port in this one. I have to check it. Oh my God, if it isn't, I would suffer a headache immediately. So what do we have here? Nope. Nope. If there's no trigger port, I'm going to die. I haven't noticed it before. Come on, man. What the hell? Nope, that's just the HDMI, but we're gonna need that anyway. So the mic, there must be a trigger port. Holy shoot, there's no trigger port. What the funk? It's gotta be, it's gotta be somewhere. No! I am highly disappointed. Why is there no trigger port, man? What the hell? Oh. Maybe. No? What? That shit. No! It seems there's no trigger port in the XH2S. I will have to check the manual. God damn it. Read the manual. It seems it's hiding up here. Oh yes. They didn't get rid of the remote release port. So I am now more happy than I was like two minutes ago. This is as far as we have got until now. Maybe I can take a little bit away now. See the lens is there now. I have a handle. I have to adjust where it sits so it will keep it straight. Where the weight is distributed, distributed. God damn it, can't speak. Well, so far, so good. And now we have to have a little thingy screwed into the end of this. That's 82. This is not it. No. Alrighty, pants. Yeah, it's a little bit of an improvised video this, so sorry if it's a bit messy. But now I have a 77 millimeter base camp, as they call it. Only problem with these Samyang lenses is that the threads, are, the threads on inside here is not the most durable to say the least. So now the handle goes in again, like this. Go to top and that. So far, so good. And here's the famous mat box that I broke because I was an idiot. And that happens when you're an idiot, idiotic stuff happens. So I have this little fancy pants VSGO here. There's a little filter up here so it doesn't blow dust around. So I can just like. I can see there's some fingerprints here. I have to get rid of. Attach this one first. Like this. And now I have to adjust the camera where it sits so it aligns with this one. That's pretty important. And as far as I can see, the lens is a little up too high. I have to move the camera towards me and I have to adjust the camera a little bit so it is sitting a bit lower. I will lower the camera a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit. Oops, that was a little much. And then adjust it a little bit to the side as well. That's it. And let's see if it doesn't fit now. Man, it's dirty. Dirty, 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 dirty. Screw it, let's just put it in. So, and now it actually sits. 
sits pretty nice right here. And the great thing about this system is that it doesn't only support itself, it also supports the lens. And now I just want to be sure that I don't destroy it again. So, so we have the handle attached, we have the matte box with the ND filter attached as well. You can adjust it by by turning this one. It's a Polar Pro one. Now I just need the follow focus. Kind of like that the the front of this matte box protects the lens and protects the fills and all that by just folding it down. Now the follow focus. You see that Martin he bought this little combined NATO rail with a little rod thingy. So if you want this setup, you have to buy this one on the side. And of course I want to use this for focus. And the focus ring on these the lens is quite a bit forward. Just never push it in too hard because you'll just squeeze the lens. It's, it's better to have it so it's a little bit loose. I think it's a little bit too tight. So just like let it fall into place more or less with its own weight and just tighten a little bit so so now it's manual so i have to have fingers on and uh yeah it's pretty cool there's a few screws here and there so you have a little stop you can put in so you can choose this is my foremost focus and this is my backmost this is Super easy, much more simple than all the electronic stuff. Mechanics are cool. All right, pants. Now it's D-Day. I have to figure out if this cable still works. There's a tendency to stuff stop working when you use it a lot. So let me try if it's actually. All right, thanks, pants. My camera ran out. I forgot to set up the tally light and I noticed that if I'm recording myself I have to set the front tally light on a Fujifilm camera to blink or else I won't notice it when it runs out and stops recording. I think it ran out at the moment where I was going to try if this little Y cable actually worked. It works. It's perfect. The only way you have to test it is switch on, switch off. Switch on, switch off. Switch on, switch off. Switch on, switch off. And then you can see if it works. What? God damn it. Okay. And now I have two choices to support my lefty. Lefty army. It could be this. And the good thing about this is that I, it can be just like turned. And this one that is basically just sitting where it sits. And it is set up for right hand use. So I have to take this one off and put it on the other side if I want to use it so let me try with this handle first have to go some cables in here so have to be a little bit careful I have to point this little thing a bit better let's see if this will no this will not work this will cover up the cable so I have to turn it around fiddle that one like it is and then I want to see if this have any is at all helpful I have no idea so so nope it makes absolutely no sense no sense whatsoever honestly that was a mistake that didn't work pro properly I mean how can this in any way support my my left hand at all when I'm focusing I have to, no, 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 this just, no, it's a no-go, sorry dude, you didn't make the cut. Focus, yeah, bad idea, I guess I have to take this one and um, move this one to the other side, but I'm, I'm really having doubts that this will be 
helpful at all so but let's try it just for for the hell of it nope yeah I think this one will fit no this will not fit so let's try a third one this one fits so these two screws have to get out If it has to be used for the other side, it has to go in from the other side. It's pretty straightforward logic. Because of the cables, that one has to go to the front so I don't, don't cover up the cable inserts. If that's what you call it, I have no idea. Let's see if that will work or if it will have any benefit at all. And if it doesn't, then I don't know what I would do. Something else or just use it as it is let me see now I want this as high as possible if you notice this in front here you can see there's a cold shoe and a few threads also they can be used for things I have to put in a, some sort of microphone there's a sound guy on the set so I don't have to do the sound I just need some lead sound of some sort yep let's get the whole riggy little riggy ticket tab is Let's see if this has any use at all. And tighten this thingy. It might actually do some good. Because, I mean, there's not a lot of space between these two. And I have no idea if it's beneficial, because if you want to hold this, kind of but you need to focus all the time so maybe I don't know maybe it's it seems to be a generally bad idea or maybe not maybe this is actually pretty good because then I can hold the weight with this but this is like a trick from I don't know if they do it in kendo the sword fighting thing but uh, we do it in Yaido and uh, use this pinky behind the, you know, where you hold it. So that keeps the weight up. And then you can sort of use your other fingers for, for focusing. Maybe I should adjust it a little bit up. I will do that. I think this is actually maybe not a bad idea. Maybe I'm not an idiot after all. Oh. This could do this could do so I can put my fingers here and even use thumb and you know what? I think it's good. I'll keep this. And if I think it's a bad idea after the weekend, then I won't do it again. But it seems to actually make sense. This is really not that bad. Yeah. Cool, so what are we missing here? We are missing a display, and I have probably the cheapest display on the planet. But it's actually pretty functional. This like, feel world thingy, you can see what you're doing. For now, this is good. And now it's bad. Balls. I have to think again. How do we do this in a smart way? Hmm. I gotta do this for a while. Hmm. Okay, maybe I have something I could do. What to do, what to do, what to do. Maybe new. No. Do I have some stuff in here? I could do it. Maybe I should use instead a thing like this. And the cool thing about using a thing like this is that then I can rotate the whole thingy majingy as much as I want. And if I'm sitting in a place where it's difficult to get to, I really need to turn the 
the monitor to the side or something so this might actually be the best idea yet but how to mount that hmm pop 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 it does have a NATO thingy here and I have a NATO thingy there so maybe I can just put it on there and just be happy about it and not make too big of a fuss out of it can it go in from each side Nope, it needs to go in from here. Ooh, oh, it's good. This could work. This could work. But then it's to the side, but maybe it doesn't really matter too much. So you can see I've I had this thing already in there. A NATO rail that's sitting right there. And I screw this on off thing into it and I can utilize it for two things. I'm also forgetting to actually record the sound properly. I'm sorry for this, this is a total mess this video but I just thought hey man why not just go for it. There we go. Come on man, you can do it. You can do it, come on. You can do it! Do it! It sucks a little bit, so I have to use some extra force. That's also the cool part, there's little small holes in... Come on, man! There you can see the small holes where you tighten it. And this one you have to tighten a little extra. But don't tighten it too much because the threads in these ones... The threads are okay, but the casing of the thread it's all plastic. You can break it easily. So don't break it easily. Just break it. No, don't break it. Do not break it. Okay. Looks like we are getting somewhere. Use a battery. Like it is. It is the battery. And you can put it in the back. And that is pretty straightforward. For now we have we have the monitor, we have the handle here that sits way too loose for some as weird as reason. It have to not suck. We don't like sucking. And it seems that the screws are loose. Now they're not loose. So... And this one up there as well. It seems to be a little softy on the soft side. This rig is very skinny, so it's actually a little bit bendy. If you see here, if I lift up on this, it actually gives way. But that is not because it's not screwed in, it's because the material is too thin. So small rig, I think you should fix that. I think you should make this a little thicker. I know you can't see the, the little display on the top if you make it thicker, but then make, make it thicker the other way around. Um, maybe do some a little bit taller and an indentation so it makes it stronger. Because this is not good, man. But as long as I lift it here, it's not too much of a concern. All right, let's get this one back. There you go. Go away, you little Mori Gabber Birdie Birdie. I'll just put it in from the bottom instead. There you go. Everything is solid now. Solid, solid, solid. Nice. It's always a good idea to really test it and pull and a little bit and all the things just to be sure that nothing is loose. If it's not tightened enough, it'll get loose during the day. So, am I in focus? I think I am. You could use just the mic in the camera, but this is, I think this is actually a little bit better just for that. So, I have a super short cable because it doesn't need to go far. Thingies. And we have to now also put in a HDMI cable. 
focus. Focus. Well, I guess you guys have seen a HDMI cable. But, oh, it focused. Amazing. This is just like full HDMI. I didn't have anything shorter than this, so I'll use this and put this on as well. So there's a little cold shoe down here, but there's also a cold shoe up here. I need space for my hand, so maybe I'll get rid of this here. So yeah, maybe we should just put it where it sits up there. The problem is that you also get my finger fiddling sounds so it would actually be better to place it over here somewhere where it's away from my hands but I'm fiddling all over anyway so I don't know could also make use of the, the little hutch uh, cold shoe here in front or a little cold shoe up here I don't know what should I do it's a choice let me try to stick it up here and see if that's too annoying if it is I'll just get rid of it and put it somewhere else this is also a small rig thing to hold this little mic and it can hold a whole bunch of different mics and it's uh, as you see it, it can sort of move and that takes away all the bumpy noises from when I'm handling the camera so this goes into the mic port if this is the mic port it is the mic port mic is happy and then I need to open up the port for the HDMI there's not a lot of space here man it's super tight yeah, this is what you call a dead cat. It has never seen a cat ever, but this is the most effective way to dampen wind noise. I mean, if you have a really good one, you can literally hold the mic out of the window of a moving car and there will be no wind noise if it's a good one. So, okay, let's go. Let's go and put this one in. This cable have to be quite free because I'm going to move that little five inch monitor around quite a bit. Come on man, what the hell? Oh, this is really tight. Oh no, it doesn't seem as if it fits here. It doesn't f bloody well fit, what the hell? This is really not good. What the heckenheimer? There you go. But then I have to have that all the way to the bottom. No! All the trouble I'm in. So to be able to put in that cable, I can't have the handle as high up as I want. And that makes it annoying to focus. Ugh. There's always something. And this is probably one of the tightest little HDMI cables I have. Yet again, I have to look for stuff in my boxes hidden away. And that's how it is. That's how it is. There's an Islamic saying that says that uh, if the mountain won't come to Muhammad, Muhammad has to come to the mountain. Well, I say that if the mountain is in the way, file that <laughs> down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not giving up here. This is what's gonna happen, mister. You ain't beating me in this. I will beat you, you little annoying thingy. The problem is this cable is a little too thick. But I, I don't dare to file this one, so this one have to suffer. There's a little more space right next to this one here, but the problem is this, that I have to tighten it with this knob, so it's a no-go on that side, so I have to file some stuff off this side. Basically this plane I have to file down. It's not a lot, it's just a little bit. So is it a little bit annoying or a lot, uh, very annoying? I don't know, but I'm gonna file that mother ba boom ba down. It's quite soft material, so uh, I guess it's possible. Oh, I hate destroying this. <sighs> yeah. Sometimes you have to sacrifice stuff, but I think it, it'll work properly. But does it fit? I don't know. Let's try it out. It goes here. So let's try it like it is. So as far down as possible. I moved this as far down as possible so I can get the plug in at the top. I want this upwards. And yes, it fits. It's tight, but it does fit. Nice. 
I think that'll do it. And then I have to get this one up in here. And then we have all this cable garbage. I have to get some proper cables because this is annoying. First of all, I want this out of the way. I'll actually strip it down here so it's managed. This is what you call cable management. It's really just getting cables out of the way so we don't have to fiddle with them. Cut that one. And then I have to figure out a way to keep this cable out of the way because I really sometimes need to take this one off or, or just turn it around so I need a little, a little bit of leverage but I can just place it here. There you go. It looks like shite but it'll work. I have to get some proper cables. I think I've seen some curly ones that looks pretty nice. I don't know what they're called. The ones I saw in some video somewhere, they were like purple. If you know what that cable brand is, please let me know. Or if you know of any full-sized HDMI cables that are curly. What do you call it? Curly cables? It co it's called curly fry, so why not curly cables? It's probably called something else, but... I think I reached the point of now it actually works. And then the next step is to mount it on the thing I'm looking at right now. I don't think I'll have that in the video because it's just about mounting it with this mount mount plate down here. So, uh, and I'll probably only bring my monopod. But now I have to check if all this works because I have no idea if it actually works. I'll take a few steps back so you can actually look at this thing in all its might and wonder. How amazing is this? Almost fully mechanical. Nice little handheld rig. One-handed. Two-handed with photo focus. Yeah. I, I think this will work. I think this will work. Yeah. That's it, man. I think it works. Let us try if it actually does. Glasses on. A big moment. Will it blend? We have to look down here if it starts recording. Oh yeah, it does. Can we focus on this? Oh yeah. Nice. Can it stop? Oh yeah. And if we do the same over here, it records and it stops. All systems go. We are ready to shoot a short film. It's actually a little bit of a horror suspense film. I haven't written it. I'm just called in as a photographer with his own gear and uh, of course the pay is like as it usually is so no matter I forgot one thing I forgot this I can place this anywhere so yeah and this is enough for just the lead sound I don't need anything more I just need the clapper as I said a little bit earlier Cool, that's it. Uh, Polar Pro, the P Peter McKinnon thing. Small rig, small rig, small rig, small rig, small rig. Some young lens. Fujifilm X-H2S, amazing video camera. Yep. We are rolling. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.